I'm Steny Whitaker. And I'm Dennis Moons. And welcome to this special webinar brought to you by Channable and Store Growers. This webinar is pre-recorded, but we will be available throughout in the chat throughout the whole of the webinar. Yeah, we decided to team up uh, and share some insights on why your Google Shopping feed is not working. Um, a lot of these insights come straight from Google's integrations team, which is a team dedicated to helping retailers get up and running with Google Shopping. Yes, this topic we felt was exceptionally important to share with you because marketeers and on online retailers are still experiencing a wealth of issues when it comes to advertising on Google Shopping. With some legit diagnostics from Google, it's so valuable that the people who are using and are most affected by Google Shopping errors know what's going on and how to fix it and why. Yeah, definitely. And also knowing um, upfront what, what the mistakes are or what the potential errors are um, can really help make, make this whole process a lot more, um, a lot more smooth um, and will also help with the visibility and eventual profitability um, of your campaigns. Um, so with a client of mine um, that I recently started working with, um, he already had a Google Shopping feed up and running. Um, it was a pretty big one, about 2,500 products. Um, and there were a lot of disapproved items. Um, so when we started working together, we went through um, all of these uh, disapproved products to see what was wrong. Uh, and we started fixing a lot of them. Um, and for, for a couple of the items, about 15, um, we actually fixed them and they turned out to be uh, one of the most profitable SKUs that this retailer had. Um, so this is information that wasn't really visible because these items weren't selling before uh, on his site, but only through Google Shopping, they were actually getting the visibility and getting the sales um, that, there were, that there weren't before. Um, so that's why it's always important to go back to the basics and, and pay attention to the things we'll be talking about um, in this webinar. So that's insane that it was like these 15 items that were previously disapproved turned out to be the biggest sellers in the end. And it's these kinds of mistakes that are important that, that you find out about early. And that's why the errors that we're going to go through, Google identified for Channable um, previously. And Channable does work closely with Google um, to ensure that our connection that we have to Google Shopping, both as in a feed and an API, run as seamlessly as possible so that you can get online as fast as possible and are able to improve your sales. So Channable is a tool that you can use um, to get a product feed for Google, um, but also a thousand other channels. But bef first, before we dive into what the report uncovered, um, I just wanted to know what sort of errors do you often come across in your line of work, Dennis? Um, so yeah, I work with a lot of retailers that are just getting started with um, Google Shopping, and, and most of them just want to get started. Um, and a lot of them will speed through the, the process of actually setting things up and they won't pay attention to the details, uh, which we'll mention later. Um, and the most common mistakes that I see are related to product um, identifiers. Oh yeah, those pesky product identifiers. They will be making a special appearance later on in this webinar. Um, Channable actually has that Google Shopping uh, requirements and specifications built in. So we can prompt you for the information that you require and if it's missing. But sometimes if that information is sent incorrectly, you'll only realize it when you get to the Google Merchant Center. Yeah, and that's, that's the part that's really frustrating for a lot of retailers. Because I, as I mentioned before, um, people that have decided to start uh, with Google Shopping, they, they just want to get their campaigns active and, and just start seeing the results and the, and the, and the sales come in. Um, and seeing all these errors in Google Merchant Center is really like a, like a roadblock for them. Um, so that's why we put together um, this webinar. Um, so we'll be covering the top seven reasons why Google Shopping product feeds fail um, and what to do about them. The first error we're going to cover today is missing invalid GTINs or item requires a GTIN. When you go into your Google Merchant Center, you can find it here under Diagnostics. Um, here you can see an overview of all the errors you have and how many items have been affected. Scroll down a bit further and you can get this error word for word um, in your Merchant Center. So what does a missing invalid GTIN mean and why is it important that Google receives valid GTINs? Ultimately, it helps Google identify what you're selling. It can boost the ad's performance um, because it's adding that valuable information. So how are you going to fix it? 
In Google Shopping, you can get um, in the diagnostics a download that you can retrieve of all these items with a missing GTIN. And if you're using a tool like Channable, you can easily create a rule that can either, well, first you identify which of these items have an invalid GTIN, and then you can either choose to exclude them for the time being until they are, until um, you find valid ones, or if you know that there's a specific reason why they're invalid, such as uh, a number is missing from all of them, then you can create a rule to modify that. On to reason number two. Uh, this is one that's very closely related to the cheatings uh, Sandy was just talking about, um, and it's regarding the insufficient product identifiers. Um, so Google requires two out of three product identifiers um, that you can supply. Um, so it, it's about GTIN, uh, MPN, um, and, and the brand. So usually you will provide or GTIN in a brand or MPN, um, which is a manufacturer part number, um, and uh, also the brand. And it's important because Google actually uses this information to look through its database and find um, other sellers that are selling the exact same products. Um, and they can actually link it uh, in their backend. And that allows them to match your products with keywords and, and phrases that you, that you aren't using on your website. Uh, so maybe your competitor is describing the product a little bit different. Um, and because you're providing these product identifiers, you're also able to, uh, to show up for, for these search queries. Um, so the way you fix this error is to provide all of the information um, that Google requires. Um, and if you're reselling um, another, another product, another brand, um, your only way to, to fix it is just to find the information. Um, so as Sandy mentioned, a lot of times those cheatings, they're, they're you get them from, from a manufacturer or when you can't find them, um, I've done this for clients, uh, just go on the, on the web, look for the products, look for um, those cheatings. A lot of times you will find them actually on the Amazon product pages um, and just add them to, to your product feed um, that way. Um, if you have your, your own products that you're selling or you have your own brand, well, then you need to tell Google that you don't have product identifiers. If you don't have cheatings or something, um, you can just leave them out of your feed and then use identifier exists, which is a dedicated uh, variable for this kind of thing, and set that to false. Um, and that will uh, clear up this, uh, this error. Reason number three is identifier exists. Like we mentioned before, this is a pesky little error. Um, the reason that Google needs it is because it tells Google what kind of product it is. Um, and if it's a product they know, whether they can link it to others or whether it's something unique. So um, Dennis shared with me before that apparently a lot of people will just set this to false um, to get rid of the error, but this can lead to a loss of visibility for searches of the actual product. So in order to fix it, like in the error that we just went through, if your product is genuinely um, doesn't have any other identifier, then you do set it as false. But if it's true, um, you have to set it to true if you're reselling uh, um, another kind of brand. So on to reason number four. Uh, and these are the temporary item disapprovals because of incorrect prices. So Google Shopping is a comparison search engine. So the most important thing for them is to have like accurate information with regards to product prices. Um, so you have to make sure that the prices that you have actually on your website match the values um, in your product feed. Um, because you can't be tricking Google to push in really low prices in your product feed and then people click through the, on the ads, come to the website and actually discover that your price is a lot higher. So Google wants to avoid these kind of um, tricks uh, so that's why they require those prices to be um, identical. Um, if that's not always the case, um, you will see some kind of warning in your Google Merchant Center. But when those warnings pile up, Google might actually disapprove the, uh, the item. So the only way to fix it is make sure that the items um, that have like a special price, um, that you correct that price in, uh, in your product feed. Uh, so you can do that through with a tool like Channable to send more regular updates um, or use the appropriate uh, variables um, in Google Merchant Center like sales price uh, to push through um, any special pricing. 
Reason number five is all about images. Google actually identified a bunch of different errors with images in feeds, um, so we decided to bunch them up into just one. Um, so these kinds of er errors are missing images, images are too small, or generic images, which is ultimately false advertising. So images are just so important for the customer when making a decision. It provides them with an overview and ultimately helps them decide and make that purchase in the end. So it's very important that you show an accurate representation of what you're selling and in a format that's actually viewable. So a way to fix it is basically just knowing the rules. So an images need to be a minimum of 100 by 100 pixels. So anything for fashion, there should be no images larger than 16 megabytes and the visual of the image should take up 75 to 90 percent of the image so it's not too much background space. Also do not use logos or an image where the text says no image available. I think that's a no-brainer. <laughs> and do make sure that all products have images. Channelable does have a check rule that can allow you to do just this. Yeah so one thing I want to add to that is as a, as a retailer, you want to make sure that you, you stand out. Um, and Google's advice is to always use uh, a wide background, but sometimes, um, sometimes that's not the best, the thing that works best. Sometimes it, uh, products are best, uh, work best in their natural um, environment. So that can be maybe it's outside or when it, with regards to clothing, maybe that's clothing on a model or shoes, maybe that's a foot in the actual shoe and not the shoe by itself. Um, so with, with the client, we recently tested, actually their, um, they wanted to create new packaging for their product. Um, it was like a health product. Um, and so we actually tested it in the product feed first um, to see if it would really like stand out. Um, and it, it actually really made a difference and we saw the click through rate really go up when we changed that image. So they knew that at least for the Google, um, for Google Shopping, that would work a lot better. Um, so that was a little test we, uh, we did. So on to reason number six, um, and that are automatic disapprovals due to policy violations. So you can't sell anything you want on Google Shopping. They have clear guidelines to what you can and cannot sell. Uh, a lot of those things are related to counterfeit goods, uh, dangerous goods like weapons, um, offensive things, um, but also a list of items that um, that you would think would be okay, but actually are not. Um, so the actual details of this change from country to country, um, but oftentimes it's pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you're selling one of the products um, that has like sometimes ingredients or something um, that they don't allow, well, you're gonna get disapproved. Um, one thing that can be happening is that you're actually selling an item which should be approved, but which isn't being approved. And that can be because in your description, you're using like words that trigger some, some kind of warnings for them. So uh, with a client I had in the, in the health and beauty space, they actually um, had listed on their product description page things that were not included in their products. Um, and with the automatic um, checks from Google, Google actually disapproved these items because they thought these products contain these things. So what we did is actually just remove these, these, these phrases from the product feed um, through uh, rules um, and that helped to get the products approved. So these things again, they're happening automatically. So this is Google using their like an algorithm or, or an automatic check to do these things. So usually you can request for, for an exception or re request like a manual um, like intervention of their team. Um, and they will really help you to, to, to fix the errors or tell you if yeah, the item can be sold on Google Shopping. The final seventh reason is Google product category. Categorizing your product helps ensure that your product is shown in the right search results. Whilst it's no longer mandatory for Google Shopping to have um, categories, it would be a shame if your product wasn't correctly displayed on the essential search term. Another great reason to send um, your Google product category is if you later want to make sh uh, Google Shopping ads um, in the Google Ads, then you can use it to create product groups. So how do you fix it? Channelable does have smart categorization for Google at the moment, so it's just a matter of 
matching your categories to Google's categories um, with a click. Google also has this, but only if you send no categories. These were the top seven reasons why Google Shopping product feeds fail. Incorrect cheat-ins, insufficient product identifiers, identifier exists, incorrect prices, images, policy violations, or Google product categories. So I hope you picked up a few things to improve your Google Shopping feed. Yes, and if you do have any questions that you didn't get time to ask in the chat, then feel free to email us at the email address provided with this webinar, or you can also find our contact information at storegrowers.com or channelable.com. Yeah, so the goal of our webinar was to help you get up and running with Google Shopping uh, and fix your product feed, but that's when the real work uh, only starts. So especially for the people watching this webinar, I've put together um, a free training that will guide you through the next steps of improving your Google Shopping campaigns. So you can find that at storegrowers.com forward slash channel dash webinar. Yes, and if you're already using uh, Google Shopping or you plan to use Google Shopping, then feel free to check out Channable's data feed management tool. Channable is a tool that helps you um, to advertise on multiple different um, marketing channels, such as Kelku, Amazon, Google Shopping, um, Trade Tracker. There's We've got over a thousand different connections and you can manage that all from one dashboard instead of having to do it all yourself. And even better, Channable do offer the first setup for free. So if it's a Google Shopping feed that you're after, it's just a matter of creating an account for free and then letting us know that that's what you want. Yeah, thanks so much uh, for tuning in and, and I hope you, uh, you picked up a few things. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye.